The galaxy is burning. Brother fights brother. And treason splits the Imperium of Man. This is the Age of Darkness. Welcome to the Remembrancer's Retreat. Coming to you from within the depths of the Vengeful Spirit. And hello and welcome to another episode of the Remembrancer's Retreat. The Warhammer Horse Heresy Podcast. My name is Jesse. I'm here with Austin and we're talking Space Wolves today. Jesse, I, I love how now that Heresy 2.0 is out, you've just completely forgotten about every specialist games GW made. We got to get through a lot before we get back to the <laughs> other stuff. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I can't even spell Necromunda anymore. Oh, but I, the Ash the ash <laughs> Wastes are here. That's true. Uh yeah, you're y'all gonna have to record your own content. Take care of that. I'll, <laughs> I'll upload yeah. it. You you just make it. It's it's been a a bad a bad few weeks for my wallet all around. It's uh, yeah, yeah. Not, <laughs> yeah, not, not least that friggin' trip to England. My God. Yeah. So you want to talk about that a little bit or? Uh yeah. So I I did the Hajj right. My my buddy um, is over there. Uh, Jonathan Hartman. He does the music for GW. Mm-hmm essentially for all all their like inquisitor and uh blood angels like all their warhammer plus stuff is his music i really enjoy the uh, the synth vibe he was wildly pleased with himself that like you have no idea i i know nothing of music i should i should be upfront with this i know fuck all about music right mm-hmm. like i went to catholic school i had a music class the end <laughs> um so sometimes he gets tar- talking about like technical stuff for his the stuff that he's doing i'm just like fuck it sounds really cool yeah but like i hear it and it sounds really cool i have no idea what you're talking about like he's he's doing some crazy things with obviously as you're, you're like hearing stuff like mm-hmm. insanity but yeah so he he moved out to england for about um i think like november Last year, he moved out to, to do all this stuff and kind of just be closer. So he's like, oh, hey, like, come out. We'll roll some dice. We'll we'll hang out and we'll do that. So I went, went to his place, um, spent a couple of days kind of touristy stuff, and then did the Hajj, met met some GW people, which was cool, met Phil mm-hmm. Kelly. He apparently, like, knows the podcast, which is just fucking insane. But probably the coolest, like, person at GW, or at least the coolest one to talk to, um, went through the museum. Mm-hmm. which is just insane. Yeah. Like, I think the listeners know I'm not a big, like, Age of Sigmar fan. Like, I've tried, and it's just not not for me. Mm-hmm. The first two rooms are just Age of Sigmar, just a 1,000%. Yeah. Well, there's there's some old hammery stuff in there, too. Um, but then just Age of Sigmar. And I came out of it being like, fuck me, I could, I could do an Age of Sigmar army. I could make that happen. <laughs> um, unfortunately for GW's master plan, Heresy had just dropped, so like that was all of my money. Uh, but I came out of the, I came, when I came out. Um, I met uh, this guy Rory, who like he he does some Warhammer like online community article sort of stuff. Yeah. But the thing I knew the name from is he does the Regimental Standard. Yeah. Or I guess did I don't know if the Regimental Standard is still a thing. I it's certainly seen a not as frequent. While, but, yeah, it's not as frequent as it used to be. But he did that, and, like, he's getting into heresies. We were talking about, like, how awesome the regimental standard is and, like, heresy. And he's like, oh, yeah, like, I come down and walk through the museum on my lunch break to get inspiration. And I was like, fuck me. That's a good job. <laughs> Just, <laughs> <Right>? like, <laughs> in the wrong line of work, man. Um, but, yeah, like, kudos to literally everyone in England because I went, I had a massive, massive buy list, like stuff for me, stuff for other guys, because it's a lot cheaper in England than getting it here for heresy. Yeah. And like Baz, Baz is the guy that kind of runs the shop at uh, like the store at Warhammer World. He had set a ton of stuff aside for me. Still couldn't get me ev- absolutely everything on my list <laughs> because they were cleared out. Really? Like the factory had none and the factory was like, da- wow. like, like a hundred feet to the left. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so like Kratos, there was not a Kratos to be had anywhere at Kratos, all. Kratos, Austin. You can, uh, <laughs> like you could get the, the big starter boxes, 
Mm -hmm. Like they had none in the store, but they're like, no, you can order them and we'll ship them to you. So like I got a couple of them. I got gotcha. piles and piles and piles of just all sorts of stuff it is something like 1400 pounds. My wife doesn't listen to this podcast. It's fine. Uh, <laughs> just like tons of stuff. But I was still down a couple of starter sets and a couple of um, Kratos that I'd wanted to get. Yeah. And it turns out Nottingham has a Warhammer store. <laughs> okay. Not Warhammer World. Uh, just your. Is it every... like the original store? I don't I know have... where the original store is. I'm, my GW history is. I have no idea. Like, I have no idea. Because I feel like when it came into, like, when the fact, like, when they moved their production to Nottingham or if it had always been in Nottingham, I have no idea. Um, but naturally, I had to pop in, right? <laughs> yeah. What a, I was in, I, I saw a Warhammer store, so I had to pop in. Um, and, you know, it's the usual, there's one one guy working there, and he was talking to some woman who's just getting into it. So I was kind of wandering around looking at stuff, and after a minute, like, she left, and he came over, and he's like, oh, hey, how are you? And I'm like, hey, like, I'm, I'm doing great. Like, I'm looking for some 30K stuff. And I had on my Remembrances Retreat uh, podcast T-shirt, right? And he kind of gives me a look and, you know, we're just chatting about, you know, how you can't get any of it for love or money in like the country, apparently. Mm. Uh, and he's like, you sound familiar. <laughs> and he's like, is, is that your podcast? I'm like, yeah. So Trevor, <laughs> hi, Trevor. You were an absolute delight. Uh, he was a little bummed because he didn't have any 30K to give me, but I got all my Munda. So Trevor... When Jesse lets me talk about Monday again, that's the book I got from you. Read some of it on the plane. I have so many plans. Um, but I, I do have to give a shout out to Elemental Games, which is in Nottingham. Mm -hmm. um, they're a really tiny, like literally a hole in the wall. Um, they're, they're not even an 800 square foot store, right? It's just kind of like a hallway with stuff yeah. lying down a wall. Yep, yep. One of those places. Kind of reminds me of the old Dragon's Den, but probably smaller. Yeah. If you removed the table space from Dragon's Den. Like, and, and just kind of <laughs> slid it together. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. And like no. maybe they had a gaming like downstairs or whatever. I don't know. Um, but they had some really cool stuff. They had little brass etch runes. Hmm which like are perfect for space wolf shoulder pads. So I'm excited mm -hmm. for that. Um, but they were like, Oh yeah, we've got like 10 copies of age of darkness and like some Kratos left. Cause uh -huh. nobody thinks to like come here and get it. <laughs> so it's like, that's amazing. I'm gonna take two of those and I'm gonna take like three of those. Like, let's do this. And it's so, like, I'm, I'm talking to this guy, Ross. He's, he's the guy behind the counter, him and a buddy. And like, I'm talking about, oh, you know, like I tried to get him from Warhammer and Warhammer World and like, I could only get two and I want four. And Ross is like, do you have a use for all those Spartans? <laughs> and I was like, why, why do you ask Ross? <laughs> oh. And he wound up like, I wound up selling him the Spartan just like straight out of the box, <laughs> <laughs> which was amazing because I didn't really have a use for it. I mean, yeah, yeah. that box is such a fucking good deal that even with a tank I didn't really need, it was a good deal. Sure. Um, so, yeah, shout out to Ross. Hi, Ross. Very exciting. Several nerds, thank you for your tanks. Um, so, like, that was my, like, Nottingham. Unfortunately, I didn't get to North Star. That was the other place I wanted to go um, because we had to meet uh, this, this gentleman, Chris, for tea. Um <laughs> who's one of, I guess he's a really old school GW guy. Like he used to be one of their like people that would go around and like hawk GW stuff to like independent retailers. You mean like, like a salesman? Yeah. He's like a, <laughs> and that wasn't the, like the title. Okay. You know, the gotcha. Title. Uh, yeah. Um, but yeah, like liaison. Hey, yeah. Like, Hey, stock Warhammer at your store <laughs> in like the eighties and nineties. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, He's got a bed and breakfast and it's fucking amazing. Yeah. His dog Hamish also apparently has an Instagram, which is wild to me because Chris is like, yeah, I've never seen a dog use Instagram before. So that's, that's pretty wild. There it is, man. Westies, they, they use Instagram. Um, 
But no, he's got this like, it's as English as possible little bed and breakfast next to this beautiful little like 600 year old stone church. Mm-hmm. Does it does it have iron wrought uh, gate outside? Yes. Oh my God. <laughs> Is it a cobblestone path up to the door? Yes. Yes. <laughs> Is there an archery range in the back? Oh my yes. God. Yes. Wow. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so we went and like it, me, Jonathan, like his, his wife and daughter, and then, uh, some other, some other people like Chris's brother, who is also like a massive Warhammer nerd. So you're just kind of like eating tea and biscuits and like the back, the back wing of the bed and breakfast, just like chatting about Warhammer. So yeah, if if you're a nerd planning your Hodge, St. Anne's house, it's amazing. There you go. Um, <laughs> I'm doing all of these shout outs. I don't know any, like none of these people know that this is happening. I'm getting nothing for it. Travesty. <laughs> uh, send me some of those tea and crumpets. Um, anyway, so yeah, like that, that was, that was the exciting part of my, my trip to England that other nerds might want to hear about. Um, yeah. It was a ton of fun, ton of fun. And of course, I missed all of our early reaction to Heresy 2.0 because you were waiting for that moment to but grab I'm, some stuff. Yeah, I was. Yeah, I, I, it was a I mean, little was, bit torture watching you guys. Like, I'm building Mark Six Marines, <laughs> and I'm building. Look how good this Dreadnought is, and I'm Austin, just like, look at this plastic Spartan, a plastic fuck, Spartan. I can't, Austin. I can't. I can't do it yet. <laughs> And now I still can't do it because I'm building piles and piles of stuff for uh, Titanicus, for Nova. Yeah, yep. Right now I'm also on a terrain crunch, getting ready for Nova. Yep. It's going to be good. Think of, uh, think of us. Think yeah. of us martyrs to the cause. Since it's just you and me, I figured maybe a little uh, Sixth Legion action would be uh, in the I cards. I love it. I love it. I don't have to put up with any of Steven's bullshit. Yep. You <laughs> can just do it. Just harassment free. Talk your spoofs wolves. <laughs> well, probably not harassment free, but yeah, man, space wolves. Holy balls. Um, where, where do we, where do we start? I know you've done a well, couple of these already. Where, well, we, we've done one. We've done the alpha legion. So right. what we did, we'd go through the first part of the, uh, the legion rules, the warlord traits, the reactions, uh, we skip the rights and go into the units and the armory. And once we finish up the units, then we go back to the rights because they talk to, speak to units that we haven't discussed yet. So That's a fair point. That's a fair point. All so right. That's, that's my uh, formula. So Solid. Yeah, so lead the way. Yeah, so we'll, we'll just start off with bestial savagery, which is our kind of universal special rule. And before we get in, I just realized you bought a bunch of boxes. You probably had it crap ton of rule books too didn't you <laughs> yeah I, four of the main rule book i was about to say anyway i'm, I'm holding this book and i was like man that was a lot to carry back from england oh no dude i went so i went with a carry-on and like one checked bag right yeah but in that checked bag it was like a hard case right mm-hmm. inside that hard case was another hard case inside that hard case was a sea bag inside that sea bag was a backpack all of it was full yeah. You were just going to loot England. I did. I did. <laughs> so this isn't, strictly speaking, like heresy related. Yeah. Um, but when I, so we, like I'd gone to London, this amazing bookstore that whose name I don't remember, bought a bunch of World War One books because that's my thing and they're mm-hmm. hard to find in America. Mm-hmm. So go to Nottingham. We do all the stuff. We, we meet up with Jonathan's wife and daughter and we're like, all right, well, let's, let's go over to tea. So he orders an Uber and we sit down on these benches. And I, I kind of look in, you know, it's a nice day. I got my arms full of, sh- like, I got that sea bag now just packed full of <laughs> Warhammer. <laughs> and I look over and I see this, like, secondhand bookshop. And I'm like, Jonathan, when does the Uber arrive? And he's like, uh, about 10 minutes. I'm like, sweet, I'll be back in eight. <laughs> went, went into the shop. There was, like, a, you know, a shop girl behind the counter. Uh-huh. It's a college town. Mm-hmm. And I go, look, this is going to be weird. I'm an American. I'm never going to be back here again. My Uber's arriving in less than 10 minutes. Point me to your World War One section. <laughs> and I walked out of there with 11 books. There you go. <laughs> so, yes, I did loot every part of London that I, or of England that I felt was worth the looting. Very nice. Um, Nicely done. 
Yeah. Anyway, now back to the space wolves. Yeah. Now, now to the important. I'm glad stuff. I was able to eke out some more uh, slice of life of Austin's uh, trip to England. It's fucking. They have a pub there that's a thousand years old. It's insane. I. Yeah, my buddy's house. Part of my buddy's house was older than my country. One day. Insane. One day. Insane. Germany anyway. was amazing. I still haven't gotten to England yet. Anyway. I to do Germany. Yeah. It, yeah. Before this becomes a travel podcast. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, although that would be a great podcast. Just travel to all the, every country's like weirdest nerd store. Yeah. We're the Remembrancers Retreat and we're hitting up every hobby shop in the world. Yeah, that's what I did for my honeymoon. <laughs> yeah. Mary that's a nerd. True. She was into it. Road trip, right? Mm-hmm. Cross country. <clears throat> yeah. That'll be our Euro trip. But instead of bars, <laughs> it's just hobby shops. Yeah. That'd be cool. I mean, I don't see why you can't do both, but. I mean, naturally, naturally. Yeah. The one leads to the other. Yep. All right. 17 minutes in. Now Space Wolves. <laughs> Super for realsy. <laughs> but it was we're talking. Great. We're talking bestial savagery. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's the core rule, or I guess the universal rule. I don't know what they call these. Any unit made up Legionis entirely of- Legionis Astartes rule. Oh, the Legionis Astartes rule. Legionis Astartes Space Wolves. Yeah. It grants you bestial savagery. Uh, any infantry unit type- with the Legionis Astartes Space Wolf special rule that chooses to run in the movement phase, may still make a shooting attack in the shooting phase and declare a charge in the assault phase of the same turn. But any shooting attacks made in the same turn in which a unit with a special rule is run are made as snapshots. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah. This is amazing. Yeah. It used to be just for Grey Slayers. It's now for everybody. We cordially invite literally every other Legion on the planet Come at me, bro. It makes me very ha happy. Units that cannot run, such as Legion Cataphracty Terminators, or models that do not have the vehicle or infantry unit type, such as, say, jet bikers or bikers, instead gain plus one weapon skill on any turn in which they successfully charge, even if that charge is considered disordered. Wow, 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 wow. <laughs> and I, I point the listeners, the people that have been playing in 1.0, being weapon skill five is now a huge fucking deal. It really is. It's not just you hit your enemy on threes, making the other guy hit on fives. This makes bikes so much better. That is scary. And the like, biggest thing is, even if the charge is disordered. Yep, yeah, doesn't matter. If you, if you make it, yeah. congratulations, your weapon skill five. Like, that, like, you know, your opponent can uh, hold the line and you might lose some bonus attacks on the charge, but you're still hitting better. <laughs> yeah. Right? Um, which is great, because as, as I think I'd mentioned on the podcast before, I know I've told you, um, but I was planning a cavalry army, or like a cavalry reconnaissance army this time. So it was going to mm -hmm. be some recon marines and a bunch of bikes. Um, and Space Wolves are not known for their bikiness. Yeah. So I was a little concerned that like whatever special rules we had, it wouldn't really gel with a bike list. But <laughs> Don't have to worry about that. Weapon skill five. God. Loving it. Uh, yeah, it's great. Mm -hmm. um, the other special rules are pretty pretty standard. You know, hey, we have our own special weapons. We'll talk about that in a bit. Uh -huh. uh, the Lords of Winter, we can not select chaplains, librarians, or primus medicae, and instead we get a pack Thagan, speaker for the dead, and caster of runes, which yes, is pretty yeah. much like it was before, except for the Thagan, which we'll get into. Uh, that's a new one. Uh, and then we get our fancy Space Wolf Warlord traits, which oh, is man. sexy. Yeah, we started on page 196. I probably should have mentioned that at some yeah, point. Yeah, no, no, I was about to say, and now on 197. Yeah, now on 197. Um, the Warlord traits, I don't, I don't know what to think about them. Well, I have it down to two. We can do some rubber duck programming and figure it out. I, I don't know what that means. That's when you speak to something out loud and then it starts to make sense to you. Ah. I well, learned I'm it on the internet. Apparently, uh, programmers have a little rubber duck on their desk that, which they'll talk through code with them and then figure out what the problem is. Huh. Interesting. Anyway, sorry for that weird fucking bit of uh, trivia. <laughs> and now you know. And knowing is half the battle. <laughs> That's right. And the other half, gratuitous violence. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to go backwards with these 
Okay. The, this the first the first one I'm going to talk about, Crownbreaker, is the one I'm least jazzed about. And we'll okay. see if you can change your mind or you can change my mind. Yes. So the Warlord and all models in any unit he joins gains the preferred enemy, independent character special rule, and they also get feel no pain five up when locked in combat with one or more enemy models with the independent character special rule. Uh, in addition, you get to make an additional reaction in the opposing player's movement phase as long as the warlord's alive. Um, eh? That seems pretty good to me. I prefer an enemy. That's uh, re-rolling hits and wounds. With shooting attacks, too. That's true. And but there's got to be yeah. an end. Does it, does it still blow over into the unit? Like yes. If, yes, it does. Okay. 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 Blows over into the unit. Better. And, um... <sighs> like, it... The task is crown breaker. If you are specifically looking to try to snatch that slay the warlord victory point and, you know, just completely break your other, your opponent's army because they have a warlord trait that helps buff them up. In addition yeah. to a feel no pain five up and preferred enemy, preferred enemy is good. Like even the last edition was good, but having it for any unit that has an independent character on it, I think that's, that's, that's a good one. That's true. You could, you could play fuck around games with this now that I think on it. Like, yeah, I, I, I haven't looked at any like of these stick, rules for stick the Space your Wolves yet. So, um, yeah, stick your so Warlord I, in like a heavy support squad mm -hmm. and just hey. preferred enemy everything with the character. Yep. And we got Jared on the line. Hey, Jared. Hey, Jared. We're talking Space Wolves. Get excited. Uh, sorry, man. See, I thought I'd gotten away with it, but now I, yeah. have, to, I have to deal with Jared's Debbie Downer over the best legion in the friggin' Codex Astartes. Uh, so yeah, so that's Crown Baker. The next one, again, jumping randomly, next on my list, and this is this is kind of equal. I can't figure out which one I prefer, either this one, the Howl of Morkai, or Hunger the Board, but Howl of Morkai, once per battle, right, the controlling player of a warlord with this trait may declare the use of this trait at the start of their player turn. For the duration of that player turn only, so just your half of the turn, right, all friendly models with the Legiones of Stardust Space Wolf rule gain a bonus of plus one strength if the unit they are part of has successfully charged an enemy unit. In addition, an army who has this warlord trait uh, gets an additional reaction in the enemy's movement phase. Plus one strength sounds real good. Especially, yeah, especially for an army that can move and then run and then charge. Yeah. In, com in combination with the bestial savagery. It's pretty mm -hmm. good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> These guys are getting scary. But I, I think Hunger of the Void might be, like, thematically my favorite. Okay. A warlord with this trait... I'm sorry, I'm going to read the fluff on this, because mm -hmm. it's, among the Jarls of the Space Wolves, there are those whose bloodlust has become a thing of dark legend. That just makes me so happy. So a warlord with this trait gains an additional wound at the end of any assault phase in which he inflicts at least one unsaved wound on an enemy model. This cannot increase the warlord's wounds characteristics above its starting value, including any bonuses from warrior items like Aether Rune Armor. But if this effect is triggered while the Warlord has his maximum possible number of wounds, then he instead gains plus one attack and strength until the end of the controlling player's next turn. In addition, you get an extra reaction in the opponent's assault phase. What in the world? How fucking good! Now we'll so, you say, a, so you got a vampire wolf here. <clears throat> yeah. What yeah, as someone who played vampire counts, this spoke to me. <laughs> he just gets angry. But the best thing is... Because even vampires, if they have full wounds and kill somebody, they don't get any bonuses. This guy, he just gets, like, attacks, strength. Yes. Yes, please. Wow. Amazing. Um, I think, like, ostensibly, this is probably the worst one because it only ever affects, like, your warlord. But is a way to save you from, like, slay the warlord. Okay. I remember yeah. last... You, last you probably... Uh consistently keep that plus one victory point away from your opponent yeah and just for winning duels with other praetors right i remember that that's actually what won me uh my best of three against steven that forced him into silence about space wolves for a year um was that the aether rune armor buffed my my praetor a little weirdly and i killed his before he could kill mine uh and this is just a better ah it just makes me so happy like Howl of Morkai, Crownbreaker, those are more 
army buffing. Although I will say, getting an extra reaction in the assault phase seems super good. Yeah, being able to overwatch at full ballistic skill with more than a single uh, enemy is good. And also, I found that uh, hold the line is a pretty darn good reaction. Yeah, and make the other guy disordered. Especially and- if they have a really wicked uh, uh, assault unit that's about to charge into you and strike you with five attacks each per model and stuff, but I'm not salty about that. No. Or, or if your models have counterattack. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> Make the That's enemy funny. disordered. That's actually really funny. <laughs> uh, it's delightful. Yeah. But not, not as funny as the advanced reaction. If somebody else wants to take that. Yep. So for the space wolves advanced reaction, this advanced reaction is available only to units made up entirely of models with the lead Jonas Astarte space wolf special rule as normal. Unlike core reactions, advanced reactions are activated in unique and specific circumstances, blah, blah, blah. You know how that works. Space Wolf's advanced reaction, no prey escapes the wolf. This advanced reaction may be made once per battle in the opposing player's turn when an enemy unit with one or more models within 12 inches of a friendly unit made up entirely of models with Space Wolf's special rule is moved during the movement phase. Once the enemy unit that triggered this reaction has been moved, but before any other units are moved... A single friendly unit made up entirely of models with Space Wolves special rule that can draw line of sight to the enemy unit. That moved may immediately move up to a number of inches equal to the highest initiative characteristic in the unit and then declare a charge targeting the enemy unit that moved it that moved if it is within 12 inches. A charge declared as part of this reaction is resolved immediately. The enemy unit may not declare any reaction against this charge. And if successful, the combat will be fought as normal in the following assault phase, with a charging unit with the Legionis Astarte Space Wolves special rule gaining all the normal benefits of charging. Yo. <laughs> Bro. Can I say, it's, I, Bro. you really haven't read these rules beforehand. No. Bro, no, play, no prey escapes the wolf. <laughs> How fucking good is that? Charge plus initiative movement on a reaction. Charge plus initiative movement that you can't get overwatched on. Yeah. I, I've i only played a couple of games of 2.0, right? But I, I rolled a little, like, 1,000-point game when I was over in England with my buddy, or 1,500? 1,500, maybe. Mm-hmm. Um, and the first game I played, I charged in the assault phase. You know, I'm still mm-hmm. working out reactions, didn't quite yeah. figure out what's going on. Was immediately shot to shit. Uh-huh. <laughs> by a dreadnought <laughs> yep, that I was yep. charging, and it just, you know, it didn't go well. <laughs> Next game, I'm like, hmm, maybe instead of assaulting the guy, I'll just run up really, really close to him and not charge in my assault phase, and the second this unit moves at all, mm-hmm. I'm just going to jump on it, but no prey escapes the wolf. Yeah, yeah. And I did it, and it was glorious. That's it's pretty, so yeah. fucking good. You put yeah. You use this once a battle. A, yeah, but but you just basically play a game of chicken up until that point with your scary melee unit. Yeah, yeah. Go or ahead, it doesn't even need to be a scary melee unit, right? Because I've and of course I was thinking about this for I'll not tell you how long of the like twelve hours in the air that I spent coming back. But this is how you. This is how space wolves will get rid of heavy sports squads. Or like mm. that fucking Kratos that's maxed out for Volkite, you know? Like anything that assaulting it seems like a bad idea because of the Overwatch. You can now yeah. just do this to it. And like yeah. it's only once a game, so, you know, but you're not going to be able to get rid of every unit like that in your opponent's army. Yeah. But that Dreadnought moving around is something that you definitely want out of the game anyway. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Insert Melta Bombs here. Yeah, and it is, it's not infantry, it's just models Unit, with the Legion yeah. of Astarte Space Wolf special rule. Yeah. So like bikes, any, anything. Yeah, you, you could charge it with a dreadnought. Yeah, you, you get your Leviathan Siege dreadnought in, oh god, fuck. Just yeah. like deep strike <laughs> into somebody's backfield with the Leviathan. Uh-huh. And like you come out and you just shoot a bunch of stuff. Yeah, which also, I hate to do a sidebar right here, but uh, the new uh, Assault Leviathan Siege Dreadnought was uh, revealed today. And she's super sexy. excited. And, and go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, and can we say that the podcast called it? We did. Oh, with the, uh, <laughs> with, the, uh, with the weapons being separate kits? 
Yeah, that they were going to put out a close combat variant. Yeah, and then have the weapons separate. Yep, and um, yeah, I, I feel that was reasonable because there was precedent with uh, Titanicus doing the same manner for some things. So, yeah, and I will say, I, I know there's some people, and even people like in our group that's sort of like, man, that's kind of, it's kind of fucked up that like you buy a buy a thing it only has half the weapon options, buy mm-hmm. the rest. Remember one, GW normally just gave you like one weapon option, right? Like you'd have two arms on a dreadnought and you'd get a fist and like a gun. Yeah. So already wild, doing wildly better. And having played, you know, a lot of Titanicus, it's super nice to have the weapons separate. Mm-hmm. And magnetized. Yeah. You magnetize built for magnetization. Them. They're built for magnetization. And also like, hey, you know, buy the Siege Dreadnought. You know, you and your buddy buy the Siege Dreadnought variant, like the, the claw variant. Mm-hmm. And then just go, oh, yeah, you want that gun, you want that gun, and I want this gun and this gun? Well, we'll just split that weapons pack. Easy peasy. Yeah. Yeah. I'm super excited. I've never wanted a Leviathan Siege Dreadnought before, but now I kind of do. Yeah. I'm welcome. Welcome to the club. They're a lot of fun. But anyway, end of sidebar. Yeah. End of sidebar. Return to how fucking good is that advanced reaction? So... <sighs> I'm I'm reading over, I'm comparing this with the Imperial Fist advanced reaction because they're both almost Very, the same thing. I was about to say it's I've I've been a uh, perfect defensed a few times by <laughs> Imperial <laughs> Fist uh, fighting, and I mean reading both the Space Wolves one is just better in that it's a twelve inch radius. And you get to move your highest initiative before declaring the charge. It's just, it's the same thing, just more. And and I think I, be, I so may, if I may, it's a little, uh, I think part of that has to do with maybe just the latent way of the armies are built, where the hmm. Imperial Fists are generally not actively pursuing, but standing their ground. And mm-hmm. they have, a, I feel with them as, have more of a passive bonus to shooting. They don't necessarily line up with that particular rule, but I see what you're saying. I also think, think... Oh, sorry, Jesse, keep going. I, I, you would think the Imperial Fist would have more of like a like an enhanced Overwatch type of thing as opposed to a charge, but... I, you no, know, the charge totally fits. Uh-huh. They're channeling Fafnir on that one. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Or, gotcha. Or Sigismund. I mean, really... Mm-hmm. That's the, you know, we are the wall. You know, it, it goes wherever we go. Mm. Um. <laughs> yeah, I, I think yours, technically speaking, um, is more reliable. Because you're getting D6 plus four normally, right? Ends within 10 inches. Yeah. Ours is a basic charge, so it might be a little harder to get. Again, notionally, if I'm doing it with a bunch of fucking bikers, it's just going to work, which is yeah. amazing. Um, um, but also I'm going to be polite. The space wolves are an excellent no, legion and have an advanced reaction that reflects their excellence. <laughs> but no, so, just interesting. Uh, and one thing I was trying to figure out if I'm, if I'm just, you know, not reading this correctly. If you know, wouldn't your opponent not be able to react to a charge anyways, because it's happening in their turn and correct. they can't react to it. Yeah. Yes. I, I okay. think that's just okay. sort of a beating Beating the horse. Making it 100% clear for the 100% guy who's not going to get it. Um, okay, okay. Because yours, sure. I don't know. It doesn't say or anything maybe... about, you know, each one says it's a charge that's carried out as normal. I mean, there might there might be some special thing where some people can do reactions in the enemies or in their own phase. Yeah, Maybe yeah. it's some sort of weird future-proofing. Um, maybe it is a classic GW, hey, we... We spelled it out the first time when we're doing pretty much the same thing again. Like, come on, guys. We just said. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I wonder, so the uh, Imperial Fist one does mention that you get your charge modifiers if you have any. It doesn't yeah. specifically say that in the Space Wolves, and I don't know if that's... I don't the, know the, if that's, normal the charging, charging unit I mean, gains all the normal benefits of charging. I, yeah, yeah. I think, I I think, think that so. reads the same thing, just slightly different wording. Yeah, which also makes me scratch my head a little bit, but yeah. Yeah. It's just, it's, it's interesting. You, you know what's something I, I do when we go, going back to called it mm-hmm. 
do you guys remember like six years ago when we got really full of ourselves and we're like writing unit profiles for like stuff that existed in the fluff but didn't yeah oh yeah we were gonna have that event yeah 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 well we did we did we had a thing where like you wrote you know uh, a you know unit profile for like a character and could mm -hmm. bring it or something oh yeah i had those drop potting beast men but no we had, we had yeah. a whole thing where we would you know let's write no, no I, I remember i remember rights of war for like you know stuff that would be cool but isn't in the fluff i wrote a space wolf's thing where they could charge in somebody else's phase and everybody was like well that's really weird to have an out of sequence charge when it's not your turn and it yeah. got kind of voted down <laughs> and and andy whore saw that and here he, we are <laughs> you know through the void uh heard my cries and yeah. and gave us this <laughs> so all i'm saying is i'm a huge genius and and you know hobby profit for so you're saying games. austin should thank you is what you're saying what you're saying and is you're a yes. space wolf fan no no <laughs> no um, no no but anywho all right are, are we talking our fancy armory now yeah it, the rights of war are next year i mean i guess if you want to well we're gonna do uh we're gonna do rights uh last because we haven't talked about the units and they speak to units that we haven't talked about so yeah fair enough okay we're just gonna roll around there jesse's a trained professional here i've done this a few times anyway. time or two yeah so the armory, want to go take away one of you guys? Austin. Go for it, Jared. I want to talk about Frostblades. A Fenrisian Axe. Uh, any model with the Legionis Astartes Space Wolves may exchange a chainsword for a Fenrisian Axe for two points each. Uh, so it's plus one strength, has melee and reaping blow. So you're getting plus one attack for being in, in base to base with two. Um, yeah, that's nice. I don't know if it's better than Shred. Any model, too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. So, like, you can equip a whole tactical squad. Yep. And I, I will say, just kind of leaning Seven forward. Seven points each. Yikes. There's whole units yeah. that start with this base instead of a chainsword. Uh, okay. Um, but, yeah, like, my if you had that, that unit of bikes that I keep harping on about, right? <laughs> 20 points. You give all of them a chain, uh, Fenrisian axe instead of a chainsword. And, yeah, I don't, I don't know. I, mean, I don't know if it's necessarily better. Yeah, theoretically, no it's an AP. extra attack, right? Yeah. You're but it gets things like dreadnoughts, uh, you know, high toughness models. Is that uh, that strength five might not do you good against you know against automata or something? This isn't going to help you at all. Yeah, like you, I don't know. But yeah, maybe that mech book will have a ton of like strength five or toughness five and six things where you will want this. I will say, what this shown against. Uh, Sons of Horus. That's what my buddy was playing. And their, oh, their thing yeah. is their plus one strength in the turn they charge. Mm. And I was like, Fenrisian Axe, it's still on fours. <laughs> yeah. So that was nice. That's but good. yeah, that's better, good. Than, better than a chain sword? I don't know. But I do like that it's any. So if you wanted to be fancy, you could do like a 50-50 split in any squad. Best of luck keeping that straight in your head. I won't. <laughs> I mean, when you think about it, so like, even strength plus one, they still get. The I think AP, the big thing the is AP is dash, but honestly, if you had chain swords anyway and fighting like tacticals, matter. it didn't matter. They'd still be making armor saves, but you've got now tacticals having what four attacks on the charge each. Well, not each, mind you, because you have to be in base contact with more than one enemy. Fair, but this may not yeah. be great in zone mortalis, but. But again, if maybe maybe it's not everybody. Maybe it's just like five guys. Your front five guys have this to benefit from the reaping blow, and That's they right, have reaping the bonus blow strength. is specifically base contact. Um, or does it just wait a, a minute? I'll go check. <laughs> I got it. You keep talking. I'll figure it out. I got it right here. Because I was about to say that that is the old edition. I guess uh, I could be wrong, huh? Yeah, we we know how this game plays. Ba -da -ba. <laughs> Lord knows, I've been wildly incorrect about multiple things so <laughs> far but yeah so that's that's the fenrisian axe but but if you give it to like five guys so they're the ones that are going to be in base to base with multiple enemy models they're giving you extra attacks they're giving you plus one strength and then you keep everybody else with chain swords because it's infinitesimally cheaper uh and you get the shred and you just kind of see see where life takes you yeah almost there almost there 
Unfortunately, a lot of the uh, special rules are split between the books, between the core I, and the Astartes. So. I don't have anything else there to say go. about Fenrisian axes, Jesse. you got to get there. Yeah, here we are, Reaping Blow. If a model is in base contact with more than one enemy model in the initiative step in which they fight, they gain a number of attacks equal to the value of X as noted in the rule. So, yeah, still base to base contact. Solid. Which and makes weirdly, sense. You don't want the guy behind you making a Reaping Blow. Right. And really, against mortals, I think I would rather this than a chainsword. Oh, yeah. Because, shoot, plus one strength, you don't, yeah. Yeah, plus one strength, and you're going to be in base contact with more than one guy. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't really matter if they get their t-shirt save or not, because they're just going to all die anyway. <laughs> right. To be fair, they're going to die anyways. <laughs> they're going to die, die anyways. <laughs> Chainsword. Shred. In yeah, they, they, we're, we are. We are. Splitting hairs on a motorcycle. You're already head wounding point. on threes, so Fenrisian axe. You're wounding on twos. <laughs> yeah, that's basically shred. But wounding you get an extra, an extra attack. attack. Yeah, that's yeah. yeah, that's the way to do it. All right, frost blades. It's, it's not my favorite. It's not my yeah. favorite. My favorite are the frost blades. Um, these are almost unchanged uh, from the old edition. Um, one, they're they're independent characters only now, which is a bit of a bummer but that was from an faq who's been doing that um you can change it so there's frost sword axe claw and great frost blade you can get the sword axe or claw for five points or the great frost blade for 10. um frost sword and axe are both plus one strength uh the sword is ap3 melee specialist weapon reaping blow one the axe is AP2, plus one strength, melee specialist weapon, unwieldy, reaping blow one. The claw, uh, strength user, AP3, melee specialist weapon, shred, reaping blow one. Identical to their old versions, or at least close enough as makes no matter. I really like um, that reaping blow. Yeah, reaping blow I think might be new. But the best thing is the great frost blade Strength plus two, AP two, melee, reaping blow, two-handed. Bad touch, Which means bad it touch. swings at initiative. Yep. And that makes me so happy. Welcome so to the club. very, very happy. Feels good, don't it? All right, That's... fair warning. I am being joined by the tiniest space wolf. <laughs> we'll see how this goes. Yeah. I'm calling CPS. Rude. <laughs> Yeah, um, that's that, that blade's really good, and I'm uh -huh. looking forward yeah, to seeing it, uh, some painted up frost blades. Yeah, it's a bit of a downer uh, that you can't give, because you used to, like, version 1 of 1.0 Wolves, sergeants could take all of these, mm -hmm. uh, and then they broke off the great frost blade and made that character only. Yeah. And it was an initiative handicap to use it, but now it mm -hmm. is not. Yeah. And it just... Like, Strength 6, AP 2, Reaping Blow? All right. Yeah, it's hard not to like that. Yeah. So the uh, last thing they have here is uh, Aether, 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 Rune Aether. Armor. Aether Rune Armor. Aether or Aether, Aether. Ugh, God, anyway. Any model with both Legionis Astartes, Space Wolves, and Independent Character Special Rules that does not have the unique unit subtype may exchange Artificer Armor for Aether Rune Armor for 25 points each. Seems like a lot. So what does it do? It confers a 2-up armor save, and in addition, it cr increases the wounds characteristic of a model with it by 1 and grants the Adamantium Wheel 4-up special rule to that model. Also known as Take It, Holy Fuckballs. Yeah. 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 A plus 1 to a wound characteristic. That's <clears throat> very, oh. very significant. Your Terminator Cataphracty Praetor could have five wounds. No. Why not? Uh, it has oh, to oh have... yeah, it's got to replace Artificer. Yep. Only replaces Artificer. Oh, well, never mind. You're not as good then. However, who gives a shit about Cataphracty armor? Your Praetor is going to have a four-up invul anyway, so you might as well give him the two-up armor save with an increased wound characteristic. Mm -hmm. And Adamantium Will, which no doubt is as useful as it was last edition. <laughs> I I mean, yeah. Well, I think Adamantium, Adamantium Will. Will is getting a boost this because before it's, it was just five up. Now it's you know dispelling shit at better numbers. Yeah, it, it's 
basically invuln save against any psychic shenanigans you're getting attacked with. You can't uh, dispel stuff, I think, with it. But uh, nah. it's it's basically a psychic invuln save. Yeah, still it's better. Just a save. Yeah, it's not it's still bad. good. You're gonna remember it, to use it. Exactly. Remember. Exactly. That's the biggest thing. That is kind of weird then, because normally you'd expect it to be three up. Um, if it's worth you know taking at that point. No, uh, Forbes reasonable. Well, like I know, like no, because like, Dark Angels that we have. Uh, some of the guys have three up adamantium saves or um, adamantium will saves. Yeah, like, like Sigismund does. Yeah, but come on, they already get they already get cool shit, Jared. We don't have yeah, to work, complain about that. Aetherune is okay. Aetherune is for everybody, right? <laughs> yeah, more like, than you deserve. A random friggin' centurion is going to have Aetherune armor, right? It's just kind of an auto take. So there's no need to give him a three up adamantium will. Like he's a cool dude and all, but warp fucker is still scary. Yeah, he's not that cool. Yeah, he's definitely you're, not that cool. You're no Torm Guderick. <laughs> You just made up that. He's the Outlander Jarl, you fucking reprobate. <laughs> oh, and I'm also, he's been my Jarl for like the whole of 1.0. How dare you? <laughs> so I didn't realize this. Uh, the Jarl I never is... bothered to learn his name. So the Jarl, I didn't realize it. it's not a council. It's it's just basically a upgraded armory war gear. Yeah, this is a new thing. Yeah. Um, this is a new thing. Uh, a Praetor of whatever variety that's a space wolf praetor can be upgraded to a Jarl for 10 points. Um, Jarls, for those of you that don't know, are essentially, they're the guys that lead the great companies, right? So there's Mm -hmm. 13 at any given time. Uh, So for 10 points, you make him a Jarl. He gains counterattack two, uh, can also be given the skirmish subtype for no additional points cost. Does counterattack still confer? No, I don't believe okay. so. Oh, fuck. You were about to make me very happy if that had been a yes. But... I, I, I'm going to look that up because I am deeply curious. I think it's, But now you I'm can do sure that, mild, um, but yeah. God, not brace, the charge reaction where you make the other guy disordered. Hold the line. Yeah, hold the line. <laughs> this guy can hold the line and just be like, Haha, thanks for the two extra attacks, noob. That's really damn good. Yeah. yeah. Now it's only, it's Praetors only. Which... Praetors only. But 10 points for two extra attacks. That's what it is. And the skirmish subtype, just because a lot of their the basic Space Wolf units are skirmish. Yeah. I wonder if skirmish confers. I don't Gentlemen. think it does. Yeah. What? If a unit contains at least one model with this no. special rule, and that unit is charged, every model with a counterattack special rule gains a number of additional attacks equal to the blah, blah, blah. You get it. Oh, my God. No, no, no. Read it, read it again. <laughs> If a unit contains at least one model with the special rule and that unit is charged, every model with the counterattack special rule gains a oh. number of additional attacks equal with, to the value and yeah, so every with model the counterattack with the special rule. So not every model in the okay. unit. Okay. Okay. Just with the special. Yeah. Boy, you got me scared. <laughs> Man, yeah. Jared was about to unit. have the worst fucking day. No. <laughs> yeah. Be, be of stout heart, my friend. Oh. It's just the Jarl. Oh. The, the nightmare of wolves in your dreams can go back to being rats. But uh, yeah, they put the Jarl, put them in a command squad with line because they got the freaking banner. Just hold shit and just dare people to come at you. That's that's not even where I'm going to be at with this, but we'll get to that. We'll <laughs> get to that. Uh, it's it's another it's beautiful, right? It's yeah. exactly what you think of for a space wolf character, and it's ten points. So there's going to be a lot of a lot of Jarls, a lot of Praetors getting promotions for ten points. Mm-hmm. Hey, how much is a digital laser? Is that still a thing in this edition? Is that still 10 no. points? No? Damn. No. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, how much is it normally for one extra attack? It's fine. Um, yeah. yeah how, so last how many edition. attacks can I fit in this uh, Jarl? Seriously. Right? Just slap the helmet. This Jarl well, can he's going to be so two-handed attacks. because of the Great Frostblade. So, you know, there's that. Yep. <laughs> uh, so let's see. Then there's some bonuses. Or not bonuses, the new consoles, right? Mm-hmm. Um, the only truly new one is the Pack Thagen. He's 10 points. Um, you can make a Centurion this guy. Uh, he gives counterattack. He gets, sorry, gets counterattack one. Uh, and a model with this rule may be given the skirmish subtype for no additional points cost. Wait, 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 wait. I got a great idea. Yeah. You could bring two of these guys uh-huh. and they could be. Thane one and Thane two. <laughs> and you put them in the same unit and then you have counterattack two effectively. 
<laughs> one wolf, two wolf, red wolf, blue wolf. I don't yes. know. Yeah. Just leaning hard into it. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, uh, yeah. I'm hilarious. There's no need to tell me. So it, it, it's basically Jarl with uh, less uh, counterattack. Yeah, you yeah. die at Jarl. Yeah, he's 10 points, and I get it. I, I'm not sure how much you're going to see this guy. Um, he can't take a, a jet bike or a combat bike, but apparently could still take a jump pack if you really wanted to. Um, but for 10 points, like he's dirt cheap, obviously, so maybe in small point games you'll see him. But considering all the utility you can get from Centurions, like... It's not that great. Yeah, there's there's a thing econ there's, majors say when you do one thing. Opportunity cost, that's the word. Yeah. yeah the opportunity is, cost of taking him is very high because, like, that's that's no Vigilator, no Tech Marine, no Primus Medicae. Yeah, there's, this a skirmish, uh, there's a skirmish uh, unit subtype transfer to the unit. My gut says no, but... I don't believe time, it does. It does not. It does not, yeah. this edition. Okay. Because I was looking at that. Because I feel like that would be make it a little more useful, but... Yeah. Um, but speaking of useful... Oh, that was the perfect segue for somebody to go into the next console. Oh, you got two console R's. We got three cool. consoles you you got three. on what my level. Got fucking yeah. spoiled here. <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> very useful, Austin. Uh, Speaker of the Dead. Allegiant Centurion. Andrew Wigan. <laughs> Allegiant Centurion. Uh, and, you know, Power Armor, tar- or uh, Artificer, excuse me, Tartarus Centurion, or Cataphracty Centurion with Legionus Astarte Space Wolves, may be upgraded to a Speaker of the Dead console instead of selecting any of the standard console upgrades, gaining the benefits below. And this is 65 points. I think this is the most expensive console I've seen so far. Definitely. Hashtag worth it. Read on, my friend. A Speaker of the Dead must increase his leadership to 10. And the Speaker of the Dead and all models in the Legion's Astarte Space Wolves special rule in a unit they join gains the stubborn and hatred everything special rules. A Speaker of the Dead also gains a Narthoseum and a Mastercrafted Power Mall for no additional points cost. And a Speaker of the Dead may not select two Lightning Claws or Boarding Shield. So he's a champ- uh, chaplain and a Primus Medicae. Yes, um, which is, this is essentially identical to how he was last time. Um, but I think the important thing here is that he's leadership 10, where so many, like every unit, you know, the basic space Marine is back to being leadership seven. Like leadership is a premium now mm-hmm. and having him be leadership 10 and stubborn is yeah. amazing. Yeah. Uh, we'll say the dark angels, not jumping across the dark angels, uh, Paladin Council also does Leadership 10, and it is pretty darn good. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. In addition to upgrading to Weapon Skill 6 and Adamantium Will 3. But yeah. anyway, and Tyrannic Greatsword for free. But yeah, anyway. Yeah. It's uh, all the right. Nar- the Narcissium, I don't pay 65 points for it either. So. Yeah. But, the Narcissium is uh, 4 up, feel no pain? Uh, 5 up. 5, five up. up. Yep. But right. still, you know, still decent. I'm not, I'm not mad about it. Yep. Just yeah. going to watch those in- instant death uh, strikes. It's true. And a Mastercrafted Power Mall. Power Malls have grown on me this edition, so I'm not... Uh, I'm, yeah, I'm excited. <laughs> they're AP3 now. Right? They're a, it's a happy time. Yeah, he he makes me very happy. Very, very happy. I like that Space Wolf model that I have a picture of right below it. Ooh, yeah. Let's let's pause here and talk mm-hmm. about this. Because um, I know not to beat a dead horse, because <laughs> um, it's in the ground. But if you look closely at this gentleman... Uh, He's in a bit of Mark Seven. Yeah, look at him go. Wearing some Mark Three pants. Got a Mark fantastic, seven, uh... fantastic mustache, yeah. <laughs> uh, and Thunder Hammer, and lovely Mark Seven chest plate. Uh, yeah, with with some Mark Threes. This actually makes me very happy because I have, minus the head, because I like all my Marines to have helmets. Mm-hmm. Uh, I have this exact model as one of my Death Sworn. Nice. Because all of my Artificer armor is just Mark Three. Blended with, you know, modern, quote unquote, armor marks. Mm -hmm. Um, So for those of you wondering, man, if I put this Mark 7 bit on my Marine, is he heresy legal? Behold. Yeah, you're good. Yes. Don't worry about it. If you're part of a superior legion, yes. And your legion is obviously a superior legion, listener. Unless you play Thousand Sons, in which case I can't help you. But there are two wolves that live inside you. And we have pictures of them on our Mark 7 chest plate. Yep. 
Inside you, there are two wolves. Here they are on my chest plate. It's amazing. And outside of you, there appear to be piles of wolves, all of which running at you and charging you in your own movement phase. So actually, I was reading, um, I got, it's a 40K book. Um, I got a special edition, let's see, Gates of Morkai? I, I now don't remember the name of it. Why am I blanking? Uh -huh. Anyway, um, it's about Space Wolves, and I bought the special edition because it looked really, really cool, and I've been saving to read it for when the new edition came out, so I'd be stoked to do Wolves. And they talk about um, one, of the, one of the Space Wolves in, in the book has developed psychic powers, and the rest of the wolves of his pack are kind of like trying to figure out what the fuck and how to deal with this. Uh, and they talk quite a bit. Um, the guy with the psychic powers talks about it with a navigator about like being a psyker and like the warp and all of that. And several other characters in the book are talking about it as well. And they mention all of them that even this guy who kind of has this psychic awakening because of the rift and all of that, how his psychic fuckery, which is like magic, he like summons animals, right? Mm -hmm. Summons like ghost animals that come and murder people, ghost wolves and shit. Um, but it doesn't feel like normal warp fuckery. And nobody can really, like they're all trying to figure out like, why is this not, like why is Fenrisian, you know, rune casting somehow feel different than like, a chaos lord or an imperial fist librarian or a navigator all of that mm -hmm. and the navigator i think it's the navigator has the opinion that like a lot about the warp is confidence and what you believe happen will happen is what happens right like the orcs demons agree, look yes. the, demons look the way they do because people think demons look the way they do right like that sort of thing mm -hmm. um and if you you know if your faith in the emperor is strong, you don't think that warp is going to hurt you. That warp fire is going to hurt you because, you know, the emperor is on your side, and it doesn't because you expect it to not hurt you. That sort of thing. And so they're talking about how, because the warp is eternally like it's very changeable and it's never the same thing and it's kind of whatever you want it to be when you're tapping into it. That the simple fact that the space wolves don't believe they're accessing the warp in the same way, like uh, that it's just yeah. not witchcraft, right? The fact that they believe so hard that it's not kind of makes it not. It makes so them like, feel it's not. Let's get that point across. No, 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 no. This isn't like other, other psychers comment on how, oh, on how it it's different. not like how it feels different. Gotcha. Yeah, this isn't like the wolves being like, well, it feels different because like. So it's a bit obviously. of a paradox type of deal where. Yeah. It's not the warp. The self delusion. The warp, gonna, yeah. Helps. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Their their faith that it is the natural power of Fenris makes it the natural power of Fenris. Mm -hmm. Allegedly. Allegedly. Well, okay, I do want to point out. Mm. Go ahead. I do want to point out one thing. That specific bit is the the intro to it at least is directly lifted from the inquisition war books what bit the uh, uh the flavor text somebody the right? randomly gaining psychic powers through like a blow to the head oh. uh, specifically <laughs> an astartes no that's actually uh, i mean that's that's a common thing now right that's that's what the rift oh yeah that happens every other day rift uh, <laughs> pre-rift it's like a common thing that like that no no no. They, they talk about that um i don't know how much you've been keeping up with like the great rift and all the stuff leading up to that and kind of before bit. and after um but that was one of the things that like oh human psychers are manifesting more and more and more and it's happening to people that it really shouldn't sometimes like you know full-grown adults or people that have already been tested really heavily that they don't have psychic powers suddenly getting them all that kind of stuff i don't know it's a good book oh, yeah. i enjoyed it it's annoying that i can't remember the name <laughs> yeah all that got lifted from the inquisition hell winter gate i don't remember it um, i think that's it because it somehow ended up in my audible wish list and i immediately deleted it. <laughs> oh. like, Get out of here. i was like my finger must have slipped i don't know how this <laughs> happened i must rectify you were uh, listening to ragnar blackman weren't you 
Uh, not one bit. It's, okay. it's a safe space. Um, my dinner just got here, so. All right, we'll we'll talk will. about this last bit. Yeah. Because um, we're talking about the caster of runes. So when we talk about all the natural power of Fenris, it's just Psyker subtype for game purposes. They don't want to confuse people by having a natural power of Fenris fi- disciplines and all of that. Right, right, right. Um, so same thing. Any Centurion, Cataphracti, Tartarus, regular, can be upgraded to a caster of runes. He's 45 points. Uh, they gain the Psyker subtype and must select one of the following psychic disciplines, the Winds of Fenris, uh, Divination, Telekinesis, or Biomancy. And they get Adamantium Will 4 up. Uh, and then you can replace the Power Weapon, Bolt Pistol, or Close com- or Combi Bolter with a Force Weapon at no additional cost, and you can get a Psychic Code for 15 points. Uh, I'm not going to go into all the other Psychic Powers, because I feel like either we already have or will. Yeah, no. um, just your space wolves. But the winds of Fenris are amazing. So first is Wrath of the Death Wolf. It's a psychic weapon. Uh, it's a template. So you know that lovely flamer template. Strength five, AP four, assault one, defil great, force. So already, all right, strength five flamethrower, defil great, not bad. But any psyker with a weapon or ability with this special rule, the force special rule, uh, may choose to make a psychic check before making any attacks with that weapon or resolving the ability. If the check is successful, then the strength value of any attacks made is doubled. Which I really like how they changed force in a way. It's made it a little more interesting. Yeah. Instead of just it's, straight up instant death. Now it's... It's doubled, which means suddenly you have a strength 10 flamethrower and can go vehicle hunting. Yes. It's or amazing. like uh, a strength 10 flamethrower. It's just... Whew. Defilgrate flamethrower. Oh my Defilgrate. God, you're right. Oh boy. <laughs> Welcome to the guard, son. At least you get your armor save, you know, if you're Marines. Yeah. It is yeah. It is just AP4. Um, just and then of AP4. course, you know, if you fail, you get a Perils of the Warp on the unit. And I'm sure we'll talk about all that. Uh, it's a D3 mortal wounds that you can uh, just basically put on anybody in the unit. Yeah, anybody in the unit. No big deal. <clears throat> Worth it. <laughs> Worth it. Worth it. <laughs> Then there's acceptable storm, casualties, right? Uh, and then there's storm rot, which is amazing. Uh, so instead of making a shooting attack, it's a psychic power for whatever whatever good that is. Instead of making a shooting attack, the controlling player of a psyker with this power may select a single friendly unit with at least one model within six inches of the psyker that is composed entirely of models with the infantry, cavalry, or dreadnought unit types. The chosen unit gains shrouded five up until the beginning of the controlling player's next shooting phase. When using this power, the controlling player may choose to have the psyker take a psychic check, and if it's passed, the effect is improved to shrouded three up. And if the check is failed, you still get the shrouded five up, uh, and then you suffer perils of the warp. Uh, Not bad. Shrouded three up is wildly good. It is. Like, damn. I'm happy, like, I'm excited to be here. Yeah, and I, and it is range, so, like, within six inches. So you got to be close, but... Uh, you do got to be close. It's pr- primarily, I would assume, it's going to be the Psyker's unit, like, whatever unit he's in. Yeah. Is going to be the ones getting it. Yeah. And the Shroud 5-up, you can get that as a reaction, typically, but not having to spend money on it is kind of nice. Yeah, yeah. Not having to spend your reaction on it. Uh, and Which getting could it do. Essentially, just by saying, I'm doing it. Yeah. Right? Instead well, which, of the shooting attack, he's not going to have a great gun anyway. Right. You just, here's what you do. You shroud Yeah. your unit, and they, have your unit shoot at the unit you want to shoot at. When they return fire, you still take your uh, shrouded five up. Yeah, that's. I didn't even think about that, that this would go off before the counter fire. Yeah, definitely use your power first. Yeah. But, and but I like then again, how they why play... would you, when you have a strength 10 flamer weapon, you can choose instead? Because it's only template range. True, 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 true. So when you're when you're on the approach, yeah. you use this. Yep. And then when you get close, you hit them with the ass- the strength ten deflagrate flamethrower, mm-hmm. and watch them rethink all of their life choices. Yeah. Now that's cool. And that is forty five points. Yep, forty five points. He's real good. Yep. All right. Do you want to do the Primark first, or do you want to wait a little bit? Uh, let's, w- let's wait for Jared. Let's or, wait for Jared. Yeah. So we'll, we'll go through and get to the HQs first. Yeah. Which, uh, uh we'll also skip the Wolfkin of Russ. Yeah. yeah. They all go together. Yep. So elites. <laughs> so 
So here you go. It's the death you know sworn, boys and girls. We all hate them. Undoubtedly, hands down, the single best assault unit of 1.0. They they had a hard counter, right? Those goddamn phalanx warders with their demo charges <laughs> were a hard counter. I'll admit that. But those phalanx warders with demo chargers weren't like weren't all that like they were good. But nobody was like, oh my god, he's got a unit of phalanx warders. It's the end of the world. Nobody <laughs> thought about it because nobody did it. And then everybody was shocked when I did it. And they're like, oh, I've never heard of doing this. And everybody in the fist group was like, oh, that's a terrible idea. Everybody's fucking stupid. Okay, I'm done. <laughs> all right. But nobody was st- like, they're not Maragall or Deathsworn. Like, they were never considered a top two. Deathsworn were the best. Period. End of sentence. I think it's because uh, usually, typically, you didn't see a lot of uh, similar loyal uh, sides fighting each other. So a lot of tactics weren't really thought about against certain stuff. Yeah. And I, I will say, what made Deathsworn the best was swinging back with all of their attacks. So if you didn't yeah. kill them all, they'd blender down your Death Star unit, except they were doing it with AP2 axes, so you were just going to die. Yeah. <laughs> I could talk about the Death Sworn. The chumps. I- <laughs> Overrated. Yeah. Give him one second here. Hopefully he'll uh, bounce back. Cause I don't kinda, know. That, that sounds kinda, like a yeah. pissed off baby. Oh, sorry about that. I accidentally <laughs> disconnected myself. Ah, we kind of figured out Aiden did it, and he just kind of hit the close. No, button. no, no. He did. It was all. It was all me. It was all me. <laughs> um, well, but anyway, the, yeah. The the two point Death Sworn are um good. We'll we'll start there. We'll start there. So they're movement seven, weapon skill, ballistic skill, strength, toughness four, I four, two wounds. That's a big bonus from last time. They just had the one. Uh, two attacks, leadership eight, and a two up save. Are you still hearing him? Yeah. Aiden, little buddy. Little buddy, what's up? What's the matter? You don't want to talk about Death Sworn? They got nerfed a little bit and now you're sad? They had it coming, kid. All right, we're gonna we're gonna try this again. So, okay. Death Sworn, movement seven, weapon skill, ballistic skill, strength toughness four, initiative four. They got two wounds, which is a buff from before, kind of in line with the new Terminators. Two attacks, LD eight, two up save. Uh, bolt pistol, power axe, frag grenades, crash grenades, artificer armor, Yamira class stasis bombs. What the hell? Uh, they're one hundred and seventy five points for five. You can add up to five more for thirty points each. All in you can armor. give anybody a power fist for 15 points. And for every five models, uh, you can give one a great frost blade or a thunder hammer. And the Ooh. entire unit can take uh, either melta bombs or rag grenades for 20 points. So on, on the face of it, it seems like improvement, right? They got two wounds. The rag grenades are only 20 points. You can give them great frost blades now. And... Some of their special rules have changed a little bit. Uh, the first one is Cult of Morkai. So before, they could only be joined by a rune priest. Uh, or a wolf priest, I'm sorry. Now, the speaker for the dead or the caster of runes can join them. Nobody else can. You can't stick a praetor in there. In addition, you can give them a, as a retinue squad to a speaker for the dead or caster of runes instead of an elite choice. So if you want to go absolutely balls deep in Death Sworn, you 100% can, and it's amazing. Um, kind of standard retinue rules, you know, they have to go with the character, they can't leave him, he can't leave them. Sure. It's fun. It's for getting max Death Sworn. But then they have dreams of the Death Wolf, and this is where they become, again, not bad by any stretch, but um, a little... A little light tap with the nerf bat so if a death sworn model loses its last wound during the assault phase before having made any attacks place that model to one side instead of removing it from play as a casualty in initiative step one all models placed on their side in this fashion make a single attack before being removed as a casualty so instead of swinging with their full pile of attacks um which is normally like four mm-hmm. right normally gross yes and, and was all conquering and all consuming. 
they now just get the one. Mm-hmm. One thing I noticed here is there's no stipulation of having to kill all of them. Oh, yeah. If you kill all of them, they still all will get their single attack each. Right. Because um, they're not considered casualties, so the combat keeps going until initiative step one. So if they make a single, they can still make a single attack at weapon skill, f- okay, weapon skill four, but they also can take freaking great frost blades for a yeah, strength six AP two attack. Uh, only two of them, or thunder hammer, right? Uh, okay, oh yeah, for every five models. Yeah, okay, for every okay. five. You gotcha. can give them all power fists if you really want to be like off theme i mean that'd be really funny but it would be (laughs) um also wildly expensive because suddenly they're 45 points a model yeah uh 47 if you give them the melta bombs or rad grenades what were these priced at before originally um i i think the price was about the same because it was 350 for me to run them how i ran them Mm -hmm. um hold on give me give me two seconds as i do quick math with a baby in my hand uh 150 points if you take 10. Um, so that'd be 325. 325. So they actually got a little bit of a points increase. Because mm-hmm. uh, I would run 10 with rag grenades and two thunder hammers. And that's 395 right yeah. now. Uh, there are two wounds each. Not yeah, unwarranted. there are two wounds each. So, like, yeah. I'm not mad about it. They were wildly good. Yeah. Um, I won't say they were under costed last edition because again, what was happening is, you know, Phoenix Terminators or Galvorbach or somebody would run at them and kill nine. And then all of them would vanish on the return. So like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like you'd win and then you'd have one death sworn left. So like, what are you going to do? Right. Uh, the answer is throw their stasis grenade, <laughs> but <laughs> Um, but now, so they've got, they've got a points increase, maybe 45 points to get them like well kitted out increase over the last one. Um, the dreams of the death wolf definitely toned down from where it was. And then there's the Yamira class stasis bombs. So a unit which successfully charges a unit that includes one or more models with Yamira class stasis bombs must make a disordered charge. Ooh, solid. That's how it was before. They were defensive grenades before. Basically a free reaction without the cost of reaction. Oh, fuck. I didn't even think about about it like that. But yeah. In addition... You can Overwatch and hold the line effectively. Yeah, but you got bolt pistols. She don't give a shit about Overwatch. That's true. But you can let somebody else Overwatch now. Mm-hmm. Um, and then... Um, I don't think you can. I think it still has to be the units being charged. Oh, yeah. No, no, no. I just meant that, like, you've... You've saved oh, yeah, that yeah. point yeah, yeah. for another another unit. Gotcha, gotcha. Um, in addition, the controlling player of a unit that includes any models with Yamira class stasis bombs may choose to activate the stasis bombs when declaring a charge for that unit before oh, any dice are rolled to determine the charge distance. The stasis bombs remain activated until the start of the controlling player's next turn and may be activated again if another charge is later declared for that unit. Whilst activated, all models with the Yamira class stasis bombs must, must, Add both the Fleshbane and Gets Hot special rule to all attacks made oh during God. the fight subphase. <laughs> all wounds inflicted by the Gets Hot special rule on a model with an activated Ymir class stasis bomb are resolved at the AP value of the weapon of the model. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, and this is what was screwing me in my practice games is because I like ran into a dreadnought and decided, hey man, if I give them Fleshbane, I still wound that Dreadnought on twos, even though I have to re-roll it. Yeah, it's your and they're time. AP twos, so fuck them. But they were gets hot. <laughs> <laughs> and I killed myself. Yeah, yeah. That would... Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, like, I was only getting one attack each because he, you know, the Leviathan murked, like, four of my... Well, it was not... It was not the right choice, Mm -hmm. which was baffling to me because, again, in 1.0, if your Death Sworn were in combat, you'd made the right choice. Mm -hmm. Didn't fucking matter. Uh, Dreadnoughts, ripping to pieces. Elite Assault Units, ripping to pieces. I, in all of 1.0, if I played a game and I got at least three Death Sworn models, just models, into into combat with the enemy... I never lost a game where that happened, <laughs> ever. Uh, power axes are they AP two as well? They are. Yeah. So, 
So that two up save. You you have no options here to take an armor save. No. Uh, Because if you get rid of the axes, it's a power fist, AP2, Thunder Hammer, AP2, Great Frostblade, AP2. You're just blowing yourself up with the gets hot. Never Um, lost except for that time you played me, Austin. Okay, I'm done. (laughs) Doesn't count as Imperial Fists. They're not real people. Um, (laughs) We're better than that. You threw a satchel charge into the unit. Yeah, that you didn't win an assault. You won in the shooting phase. It's just a bullshit one you made up. It's called industrial efficiency. Okay. <laughs> sure, sure. To ho- front uh, towards enemy. So this this is a bit of a downer because it used to be you could throw these as well oh. uh, as an like an AP two poison temp like small blast. Mm-hmm. So like it's baby it's been down. Yeah, baby's first phosphax. It was delightful. Um, so it's a downgrade. Again, I. I can't really say it's a bummer because, again, they were the best assault unit in the game. I'll fight anybody that says otherwise. Just for sheer, it didn't matter what happened to them. They were going to do work. Yeah. Um, They're amazing. I will say they do synergize a little better now because you can get, you know, if you have hatred everything because you've put a uh, speaker for the dead in there, that gets hot, not as as dangerous, right? The bestial savagery. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Yeah, so th- that is a perk that they can now run and charge. Yeah. So, you so, know. So, here's the nerf that nobody's brought up yet. Hmm. Weapon skill four. They've always which I know you're skill four. I, I, yeah, but that but yeah, wasn't as big a deal in 1.0. That's true. Um, it wasn't. And that and was actually, oh, actually... That was actually the problem, because whatever fucking Dreadnought I was fighting was weapon skill five. Mm-hmm. So I... Do they get plus one on the charge? Yes, and also, speaking uh, death, of... Death, oh, I just realized... Well, hang on, guys. Uh, Deathsworn are heavy, meaning that they cannot run. Oh, they are? shit. Where do you see heavy? Uh, right in the oh. unit entry. Yeah. Oh, so, you know what you that know what does that mean, though? Yes. Plus one weapon skill on the you charge. Plus, because of bestial savagery. If you can't <laughs> run, plus one weapon skill. That makes me happy. But also, you can't run. <laughs> You can't run. You couldn't run last time. I'll I'll live with that. They do have counterattack one though, which is hilarious. That's um, super good. Because if you charge me, you're disordered, and I get a plus one. And you get that plus one weapon skill even if uh, it's a disordered charge. But I'm still gonna charge those guys because you're hitting oh, yeah. me on fives now. Assuming I'm charging it with Templars in my head, yeah, this you, entirely you yeah, it's, for, it's, yeah. it's still better, I think, to lose the attack and gain gain the weapon skill bonus. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Um, it yeah, it still looks like a very noticed. fun unit. And yeah, they're, you have to think about them a little more. Cause again, before it was just a matter of pointing them at something. And if they didn't get shot to pieces on the way in mm-hmm. and by to pieces, I mean, all of them died. Mm-hmm. Uh, they were going to win that combat. And now you gotta, you gotta pick your battles a little bit because if you do fight somebody with high initiative, low AP, uh, you're not going to be able to just sort of reeve through them like you used to be able to. But still. But two wounds. Two wounds each. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, happy days. Happy days. So, yeah, I'm I'm cautiously optimistic. It's a new dawn, and I'm not mad about it. I would it. not even be cautiously. I, it's a good unit. It's a, No, it's a great unit. It's still a great unit. Mm-hmm. Um, just got to think a little bit. Yeah, it requires a little more tactics, but honestly, that's that's a good thing yeah. for a for a war game. <laughs> Instead of point towards enemy, yeah, just all just, along and just remove uh, models. Yeah, um, the Varagir. Yeah, the Varagir. And again, if you look at the bottom, there's yet another dude with marks. Actually, that might be Mark Eight. It's Mark Seven. There's another dude in fancy power armor. Yeah. But I also draw your attention to the uh, the Mars Pattern Rhino that they're chilling out behind. Look at him go with their Mars Rhino. Mm-hmm. And some Space Wolf upgrades. Yeah, looking sexy. Not recognizing this uh, this demon here. Um, that's the Greater Spawn. Okay. No, it's a. Uh, uh, it's oh, a Forge sh- World. Yeah. It's a yeah. I think it is a Great Chaos Spawn. Yeah, Great Chaos Spawn. Gotcha. Like old, old. They still sell them, I think. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, yeah. maybe. Uh, but yeah, Varinger Terminators, two fifty for five. Um. Their war gear is a frost axe, or a frost sword, or a frost claw, a combi bolter, and cataphracty armor. Uh, they have fear one, relentless, counterattack one, stubborn, hammer of wrath two, 
Lord's Bane, and Bulky 2. I should also point out that these guys are also heavy. They are also heavy. And their weapon skill 5. Oh my. <laughs> which means their weapon skill 6 on the charge. Thank you very much. Yeah. Uh, movement 6, BS strength, toughness 4, 2 wounds, 4 initiative, 2 attack, LD8, 9 for the sergeant. Uh, well, the Thagan, right? Right? He's excited. Um, and I do like it. So you can give him a Land Raider Proteus as a dedicated transport if there's no more than five of them. Uh, Varinger Wolfguard Terminator Squad of any size can take a Land Raider Spartan as a dedicated transport, which is exciting. Uh, you can add five more of them for 45 points apiece. You can exchange your Frostblade for a Power Fist for 10 points, or a Chain Fist or Thunder Hammer for 15. Legion Vex for 10 points. Uh, and then Magna and Minor Combi Weapons for their traditional 10 and 5 point upgrade. A second Frost Blade of whatever va value you wished for 5 points. A Heavy Flamer for 5 points. Or the classic Reaper Auto Cannon for 15. That's right, they can all take a Reaper Auto Cannon. Get some. Uh, the Thagan can take a Great Frostblade for 10 points and a Grenade Harness. Uh, and then that Lord's Bane special rule means they can all issue challenges as if they were characters. Uh, and if the enemy challenger is removed as a casualty, you get an extra plus one to the combat res. Hmm. So Chosen Warriors with some extra rules. Yeah. Yeah. They're sexy. I especially like that Hammer of Wrath 2. Yeah. That's, that's, that's fun. Good. Like that's still... fun. And the fear one is always going to be nice. Fear one's great. Stubborn is really good. Relentless. Yeah. Yeah. They're, they're your classic better than you Legion Terminator squad, right? <laughs> no complaints at all, except for the models. But <laughs> I know how to sculpt fur. So I'm going to make my own cataphracty Terminators with blackjack and hookers and go. right side up bolters. <laughs> There. Did I do all the jokes? Yes. Yes. Did I, I, I hit them all? Okay. Uh, Jared, do you want to take uh, Gray Slayers? All right. Let me give me a second. Here. If I'm, I mean, if not, I can take them too. No, no, no. This is okay. 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 Gray Slayer Pack. They are movement seven, weapon skill four, ballistic skill four. They're utterly average in every way. Leadership seven, three up save. Uh, they start with uh, nine Gray Slayers and one Huskarl. That is a co-opted name. Let the man <laughs> you are appropriating Inwit culture. Let the man speak his piece. By Stop. the time we get done here, he'll recognize his failing and be sure to correct it. No, no, there's no failing in the truth. Uh, unit type, they are infantry and skirmish. Uh, uh, they have bolt pistol, oh. Fenrisian axe, combat shield. Frag grenades, crack grenades, power armor. Uh, special rules, they're obviously mm. Lee Jonas started as Space Wolves, Relentless, Counterattack 1, and Heart of the Legion. Sorry, mm. I'm burping a lot. <laughs> right in the middle of eating a burger. Uh, they can take a Rhino as a dedicated transport, or a Land Raider Proteus. And yeah, so that's it. Oh, got a bunch of, Jesus, that's a lot of more gear options. Um, they can take 10 more guys for 12 points. Anybody can take a bolter. Uh, they can take bayonets. Anybody can take a power weapon for five points, which is pretty damn good. Uh, what? 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 Anybody can take a power weapon for five. Uh, points. Any model in the unit may exchange its Fenrisian axe for a power weapon for five uh, points. It's right. Mm -hmm. Black and white. Yeah. 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 Um, every fifth guy, the can natural take, uh, power of Fenris, <laughs> uh, Every five, fifth guy can take a heavy chain sword, power fist, or lightning claw. Uh, every fifth guy can also take a hand flame or a plasma pistol. They can take a vox of axilla um, and the huskarl. <clears throat> can take a power fist, <laughs> lightning claw, frost blade, uh, sword, axe, or claw, or a thunder hammer. So no great frost blade for you. Uh, he also can take a hand flamer and a plasma pistol. Uh, um, or two lightning claws. Uh, you can take artificer armor and melt a bombs. Austin, what you should do is give like a 20 man squad of these guys power lances. 
So when somebody charges you, you get counterattack one and you're hitting an initiative five. <clears throat> so you're most likely well, hitting before them with AP three weapons that are strength five. A bunch of guys with spears. You're Look, welcome. I, and I they're wouldn't... skirmish, so you can spread them out to like encircle yeah. somebody. Yeah, there's the line. So yeah, they where capture. is the skirmish I'm... rule? Where is that? That's um, the core rule book, I believe. It's in the. Maybe not. Hold on. Because yeah, it's in the, the subtype. It's in the subtype. All right. You get like plus to... one to your cover saves, I think. Plus one to cover save, and you're uh, you spread out three inches instead of two for your coherency. Okay. Yeah. Are you sure? Pretty sure. Yeah. Pretty damn sure. But stand by, because. Yep, skirmish subtypes. Yep, so in the Astartes rulebook, skirmish. Page 95, a unit with that only, and that includes only models, a unit that includes only models with a skirmish subtype has a unit coherency of three inches rather than two. And a unit that only includes models with skirmish subtype increases all cover saves granted by terrain by one, from i.e. from six to five. Does not, this only increases existing cover saves and does not grant one when the train that does not normally grant a cover save. This rule cannot increase this cover save to better than a two-up. That's outstanding. And I thought it was important to rehash this, um, because remember, coherency range being three inches means that you are I covering fight... The board. Not, not only do I cover the board, but I fight an assault within three inches. Friendly model within three inches of a guy oh, in base yes. contact swings. Yes. Yep. Not just two which is going to make us so you have wildly three, good you have, at Zone Mortalis. You have three lines of people instead of two. Yeah, generally. I got three lines instead of two. Yeah, I really like... So these are also troops, and they're lines, so they're scoring. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. I would really love to see in the future each Legion having a modified like tactical unit. Because I really like this, this unit here. It's troops. Oh, if, it feels like tactical plus. If you like this... If you like this, my friend, uh -huh. you're going to really love the Gray Stalker. Oh, pack. Jesus. <laughs> That's right. There's another one. Oh, uh, yeah. Basic stats, troops, exactly yeah. the same across the board. Uh, they're troops, they're infantry, they're skirmish, they have counterattack, they're relentless, they're heart of the Legion. Yeah, uh, so the difference are, is war gear. They're despoilers, effectively. Yeah, where, where the other guys start off with a pistol, axe, and combat shield, these guys start off with pistol, chainsword. Pow, pow, pow. But you'd think they're despoilers, but that's not actually where they're going with this, right? Okay. Okay. So it's 145 points, literally the exact same as the Gray Slayers. The exact same. It's oh. only the war gear that matters. Yeah. So you can take 10 more of them, 12 points each. You can give them all bolters for a point or combat shields for a point. Um, if they have a bolter, they can take a bayonet. You can give anybody a power weapon, just like the other ones. But for every five models in the unit, one can take... Magna combi for 10, minor combi for 5, special flamer, volkite, special rotor cannon. Yeah, it's the special weapon squads, right? So you can give them four plasma guns at 10 points apiece, four melta at 15 points apiece, uh, instead of the hand pistols and flamers and, and the sort of close combatiness. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And remember... For two points apiece, you can also change their chainswords out for Fenrisian axes. <laughs> so it's literally, they can each be equipped identically to the other. Because you can give these guys combat shields, which the Grey Slayers start with. You can give them axes. Like, you can do... It's weird. It is really weird. And I it's, wonder if it's... Uh, it kind of feels like they're kind of covering models that are uh, existing. I think it's a balance, a balance effort from the old Gray Slayers. Because the old Gray Slayers, just all of this, all of the options were in one unit. Yeah. And you could get stupid good about it. Yeah. Um, now they make you kind of, kind of go one way or the other. Like, you can have a squad that does everything. You know, I can give my Gray Stalkers a combat shield and a Fenrisian axe. And then a bunch of plasma in the squad. But now that makes them, like, much more expensive than they would be otherwise, right? Yeah, so yeah. this is kind of... The, these, I think, are more your tactical um, equivalents. And the Fenrisian Axe Combat Shield Gray Slayers are more the assault unit despoiler equivalent. But they're both amazing. 
right? They're both skirmished. They're fighting three inches coherency. They all have counterattack. They can, they all have relentless, which what does that get you? None of them have heavy weapons. The plasmas, they can shoot with a plasma and charge. Oh. Or bolters or, or anything. Well, I can do that already, but I was snapshot shotting. Well, now you're like not. All your assault weapons, or um, non-assault weapons. You're right. Your bolters. Now you can fire can, with bolters and charge. I can either run and snap fire, or I can just move like a normal person and fire my regular guns and snap. <laughs> oh, happy day. Oh, death to literally all of you. <laughs> Oh, well, thank keep, you, Jared. Let's keep, let's keep You've just on. made my whole day. <laughs> That's what I That's do. That's amazing. Bless you. Bless you. All right. So, so yeah, you you thought having one tactical equivalent was cool. Boy, guess who that makes the best legion? Crickets. Oh. All this, and you're still not better than the seventh. No, no, no. Does no, that no, sting no. to note that in your heart? It would only sting if it was true, Jared. <laughs> All right, let's keep going. Let's keep going. <laughs> Dude, there's Enough so, of so much. Enough of this. We're, we're, so much. Dark. we're 102 minutes in, guys. We're a feature film. Oh, my God. Film. We're a feature film. Jesus Christ. Film. There's legi- literally, there's another hour's worth of shit left. Like, no, I, we're, I, we're getting there. We're getting there. We're getting there. So, And we can breeze through these next two. Would, there's would not... y'all get mad if I took off because Henry's bedtime? No, no. Go ahead. Yeah, go for it. Thanks for hanging out, Jared. Yep. Yeah, I got another like 20 minutes before I'm gone, so we'll try and right, knock this out. Knock, yeah, we got this. Bye, yeah, Jared. So, Bye. Uh, talking special characters, uh, you have Gygor Felhand, the guy created for Burning of Prospero. Yep. Uh, he is, is pretty much the same uh, as he was before. 135 points, weapon skill BS5, strength toughness 4, 3 wounds, initiative 5, 3 attacks, LD9, 2 up save. Um, he has the fell hand, right? Mm-hmm. Which is that fancy lightning claw, plus 1 strength, AP3, master class master crafted rending five up shred reaping blow delightful reaping blue one uh and he's got crown breaker he's also skirmish too so yeah and that's that's a common one for the characters just because you need to be skirmished to go into the gray slayer packs yeah oh that's true yeah yeah, yeah. well um yeah because or else they would lose their skirmish coherency so yeah 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 makes sense um eh, he's fun he's nothing to write home about yeah. But for 135 points, he's not too bad. Yeah. Yeah, he's got relentless counterattack, counts as master of the legion, which I feel like is fairly cheap. Yeah, yeah Delegatus Plus. Yeah, Delegatus Plus. Uh, unlike Harl Redblade, 210 points. Oh, this guy my man, least. Jarl of the Fourth Great Company, the Ravager, headsman of Koltok. <laughs> um, weapon skill six. BS5, movement seven for a man in Tartarus Terminator armor. Shit. One second. Sure thing. Goddamn Spanish tele... Like, scammer. They've gone international. And I can tell it was a scam because it was somebody in Spanish asking about my car's extended warranty. Not again. Luckily, I know how to say we all fuck your mother in Spanish. So, you know, ended that conversation quickly. Uh, <laughs> anyway. We'll remove that. The Red the Blade. It's fine. Red Blade. Yeah. Um, movement skill seven? or Movement, movement seven. Tardos oh, Terminator armor. I said movement Weapon. skill. Jesus. Anyway. <laughs> it's, it's all right. It's all right. Uh, weapon skill six, BS five, strength, toughness, wounds, all four. Mm-hmm. Initiative five, four attacks, LD10. He's got Hearse Splitter, which is his fancy uh, axe, which is not an actual normal power axe, although it does count as a power weapon for rules that affect that sort of thing. Uh, it's strength plus two AP two melee armor bane, which is melee, delightful because yeah. it swings an initiative just like it used to. He also has a heavy bolter, yeah. which is fun. It his, is hilarious, and I love it. His assault heavy bolter, yeah. <laughs> uh, grenade harness, and an iron halo. So he oh, he's relentless. Nice... Now. He's relentless, so it doesn't matter. Yeah, yeah. Um. So Harl and all the models in a friendly unit he joins gains preferred enemy infantry. Uh, and you can make an additional reaction in your opponent's assault phase, which is exciting. Um, and then up to three units composed entirely of models with the infantry unit type and the same detachment as Farl may be given the scout special rule. 
which is fucking awesome. Uh, but again, yeah, that's pretty much exactly what he used to be, right? Inexorable counterattack one. He's got fear one, which is new. Mm -hmm. um, but otherwise, pretty much, pretty much as he was. This is a fun guy to take. You give people scout. You start doing outflank. You start doing all sorts of fun stuff with them, uh, and kind of have a blast. But I will say um, that this this actually does go nicely with one of the rights of war. Um, yep. What you want to roll into those first, or? Uh, yeah, we'll roll into that. Maybe we should have a separate thing for Russ as a Primarch, just because we are getting in there, and there's a ton to deal with him. Uh, uh, eh, it's up to you. It, we'll see. We'll see. Okay. Because the, the rights of war are really, really cool. Yeah. Uh, you want right. to talk about the first one? Yeah, uh, rights of war. Ba, ba, ba. Uh, page 198. 198, thank you very much. Uh, so the first one we have is the Black Watch. All models with the Space Wolf special rule and attachment with this right of war gain hatred traitors and preferred enemy Primarch special rules. All models in a detachment with this right of war gain fearless when locked in combat with a Primarch that have the traitor special rule or is otherwise using the traitor allegiance. Hmm. When a unit from the detachment using this right of war has a charge declared for it, targeting an enemy unit that includes a model with a Primarch unit type, that unit gains a bonus of plus two to its charge roll made to determine its charge distance. Uh, for limitations, it can only be taken by an allied detachment with the Legionis Astarte Space Wolves faction and may never be taken for a primary detachment. They may not include any models with a vehicle or Primarch type and may only be used by an army that has Loyalist Allegiance. A very fluffy... Uh, a group that comes straight out of the freaking Black Library books. Yeah. So for those of you that are unaware, um, the Space Wolves were given given this job to essentially send out watch packs of about 40 guys, it seems to be, to go hang out with every Primarch and murder the shit out of them if they turn traitor. Mm-hmm. Um, for those of you kind of laughing at that, because it is kind of ridiculous that 40 Marines, no matter how good from how cool a Legion can take a Primarch, uh, like 15 of them almost took Kurs. Um, they made him run away instead of fight, fight it out, which is well, fun. Kurs is also kind of predetermined to kind of run away anyway, but it's true. It is only Kurs, right? They're, they're not fighting Angron to the death. Um, but it was a fun trick, uh, and I, I just really love it. And it's the only right of war, at least in the loyalist attack, loyalist book, uh, that specifies it can only be taken as an allied detachment. Yeah, I really haven't seen something like that before. Yeah, even it might be the only one. There might, so I, might. I can't think of it off the top of my head, but it's a really neat and interesting thing because. Yeah, it's, and just it's so good. Really did. Yeah. Just get hatred. The other guy. Like. <laughs> Yeah. You know, the Primarch stuff, that's, you know, eh, what are the odds you're going to be fighting a Primarch? Um, but just, it's, yeah. fuck Unless you traitors. Like a campaign or something. Yeah, or like a mega battle, you know, mm -hmm. you know there are going to be a bunch of Primarchs on the field. No, it's fun. And this it's grants fun. to whatever Space Wolf thing you take. So if you want to take a Talon of uh, Leviathan Dreadnoughts. And they all get hatred traitors, <laughs> Jesus Christ. Hatred and they're not vehicles anymore, so there you go. That's right. Yeah, shit. That's awesome. That's pretty funny. Uh, yeah, uh, so I, that would be, not be a very uh, uh, nice thing to do, I think. It would not, it's not make in the you spirit of friends. The, and not in the spirit of the Black Watch, I feel. Although, I really, you can't, I mean, it's never mentioned that there were any dreadnoughts in the Black Watch, right? True. But really, if you wanted to have somebody stand behind a Primarch and like have the capability to clonk him over the head, mm -hmm. surely it would be a couple of Leviathan dreadnoughts. Or... <laughs> You know, only in death does duty end. It's true. They got me last time. They're not going to get me this time. Right? They Payback. had us in the first half, not going to lie. <laughs> anyway. Cool yeah, right. so, I like it. I like it. Uh, on to my personal favorite, the Pale Hunters. Uh, this is sort of a pursuit kill right of war. All models in a Grey Slayer pack or Grey Stalker pack from a detachment using this right of war gain the hit and run special rule. And when using or when making a hit and run move, may choose to move a number of inches up to the distance rolled rather than the full distance, so long as they remain at least one inch away from the enemy unit, from any enemy unit at the end of this move. 
On the turn in which a unit from a detachment using this right of war enters play as part of a flanking assault, all models in the unit gain Fleet 2 and Rage 2 until the end of the player turn in which it enters play. And up to three units from a detachment using this right of war, made up entirely of models with the infantry or cavalry unit types and the Legionis Astartes Space Wolf special rule, may be upgraded to grant all models in those units the outflank special rule for no additional points cost. Hooray! Wow, wow, wow. Uh, so, limitations. Detachments using this right of war may only include a single heavy support choice, and at least one unit from a detachment using this right of war must be assigned to a flanking assault, to which I say, I'll pay that price. Yeah. <laughs> uh, my heavy cool. support choice is going to be three rapier vindicators, because that's what I have, and they're fun. Um, and I'm just going to roll balls deep in all all of it and harl works well with this too because you can give even more guys flank and, or a scout and do all sorts of crazy stuff oh man yeah um i'm not taking far with it with my new my new list but best believe that my bikes will be gaining fleet two and rage two and weapon skill five on the turn they charge Whew, that's scary and then the gray slayer packs get hit and run hooray <laughs> yeah all right it's it's super good Yep, uh, the final run of war, the Bloodied Claw. Uh, once per battle, at the start of their player turn, a player whose army includes a detachment using this right of war may declare a Bloody Claw. Once the Bloody Claw is declared, and until all until the start of the controlling player's next turn, all models with the Legionis Astartes Space Wolves special rule in the detachment with this right of war gain the following benefits. You add plus one to the score when used to determine the winner of any assault. This is not cumulative and have no individual combat may have it applied more than once. You also gain the Fleet 2 and Furious Charge 1 special rules. You gain Stubborn special rule, or if they already have it, uh, or another special rule that allows them to ignore modifiers leadership, you gain the Fearless special rule instead. Uh, your limitations during the turn which you have declared the Bloody Claw, all units that include one or more models of Space Wolf special rule in this detachment, capable of charging, must always attempt to charge an enemy unit in the assault phase, if there are any eligible targets in range and line of sight. If multiple eligible targets are available, the controlling player may choose which to declare a charge against. Now, with that being said, um, when you You're must attempt to charge, does that mean that you cannot shoot a weapon that would prevent you from charging? Um, I can run and I can charge after shooting. Right, right, right. <laughs> yep, okay, yep, they figured that one out. Good point. Yeah. Don't worry. Don't worry about it, boss. Yeah, we, we got you covered. <laughs> um, I so this sounds amazing, right? It sounds really, really good. Stubborn to everyone. Plus one to your combat res. Fleet two. Furious charge one. The big downside is you have to try and charge. <coughs> uh, yeah. So I've played enough fantasy to know that units that are forced to charge if they can can be baited into really bad decisions. Uh, like this army yep. should never see a land speeder in it, for example. <laughs> yeah, because they'd have to fucking charge something whenever you did the bloody claw. Uh, and great for uh, reactions of I'm going to move back just you know I was eight inches I'm going to just move back just to get to that twelve inch and now you got to yeah. charge me. Or like hey the I've got that I've got that unit of Lazcan and heavy weapon guys, uh, but fuck they deep struck that Leviathan within 12 inches of them but i'm going to declare the bloody claw and ah shit now they've had to charge that leviathan this is going to go badly you know like there yeah. there's a lot of give and take with it so like i it's good and a lot of people use it this is actually the same basic setup as the old bloody claw mm -hmm. uh, and people seem to prefer that to the pale hunters um, but personally, I don't like it when I'm forced to do things with units. Yeah. Because yeah. if your opponent is smart, they will force you to do bad things with them. Um, but hey, we're here for a good time, not a long time. Right? Yeah. Yeah, I think so. Um, we only have Lehman, Russ, and Wolfkin. I know you're getting late, but I feel like we really need to wrap this up with a bow. All right, we'll put a bow on it. Put All a right, bow on it. Cool. Lehman, I'll, Russ. Yep. The also, Wolf King uh, legacy, of Cyrus. I will say uh, Legacies. PDF has Fenrisian Wolf Pack for 10 points. You get wolves for 10 points. You can run around and scratch at people. And oh, that's fun. They're a, retinue, they're a retinue unit that you can take. Yeah, you can give them to people as a blade of wounds. They're delightful. Yep. 
Yep. So Ten yeah. point start, five points each, up to five. So anyway. Sweet. Uh, uh, so Lehman Russ, the Wolf King, the Lord of Winter of Ruin, Primarch of the Space Wolves, Movement 8, Weapon Skill 8, BS 6, Strength 7, Toughness and Wounds of 6. Also, we forgot the Wolfkin. <laughs> we'll we'll get wolf there when we get there. Okay, okay. All right. Initiative and attacks of 7, Leadership 10, 2-up save. He's got everything you would ever want in a Primarch plus counterattack 2. Yeah, from the things that I've seen in this edition, Primarchs in general are just so fucking wild. Yeah, They're he's amazing. got the Sword of Bail Knight, plus one strength, AP two, melee, murderous strike four up, brutal two, fearsome ruin, master crafted. Fearsome ruin means if you take a casualty from this during <laughs> the assault phase, you have to roll an extra D6 for the leadership check and keep the two highest die to determine the result. Did he have that in the previous edition? Uh, not with that rule. Yeah, because I think that was the one of the special rules for the one of the lion's swords. Yeah. Uh, he's got the Axe of Hellwinter, if the Sword of Bale Knight isn't doing it for you, which is Strength plus 2, AP 2, Melee, Sunder, Reaping, Blow, Master, Crafted. Who do you want to go murder? I don't know. Pick one. Uh, Scorn Spitter, which is his fancy pistol. It counts as a bolt weapon, 12-inch range. Strength 4, AP 3, Assault 3, Rending 6 up. It's a party trick. That's fine. Mm -hmm. You're not uh, here his, for the bolter. Right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, the Armor of Elevangar. Two up armor save, four up invul, which is increased to three against flame, melt, and plasma weapons. Uh, enemy models in base contact with Rust suffer a minus one to hit him in assault to a maximum of six inches, or I'm sorry, to a maximum of six plus on any turn in which Lehman Rust makes a successful charge. Mm. Massively nerfed, but now people understand what it does. Yeah. <laughs> uh, he's got the Howl of the Death Wolf. Once per ba battle, Lehman Russ can do this at the start of his turn, uh, in which case all friendly models with the Space Wolf special rule gain a bonus of plus one to their movement, and any enemy units that include one or more models with the Legiones Astartes Space Wolves must take an immediate pinning test. Well, that's very interesting. And just a little extra, why are you taking traitor Space Wolves, you reprobate? It's all right. I've, I've got a console with a banner that says Wolf, not dogs, and a Chaos Star on it, just, just for when I have to change teams. Um, <laughs> but it's a fun when, like, oh, we have an event, and we have an odd number. We need one more person to be traitor. A Space Wolf guy. Yeah. Go play that other Space Wolf guy. Mm -hmm. Just swap. Uh, as well as Sire of the Space Wolves, um, which gives all the other wolves plus one to their strength uh, in any turn which they successfully charge. Um, and they can do an additional reaction in the opponent's assault phase as long as Russ hasn't been removed to the casualty. So, Man, that's a um, huge bonus for bestial savagery. Plus one strength, yeah. plus one weapon skill. Yeah. Good night. Yeah. Thanks for coming out. So he's as Primarchy as a Primarch can be. I haven't paid a lot of attention to the other Primarchs, but he just seems very much up there holding his own. Yeah, Especially really because yep. for an extra 100 points... You can give him his buddies. Whoops. Frecky the Swift and Gary the Cunning, the hearth wolves of the king. Um, funnily enough, they have different stats. So <laughs> Frecky, they're both movement 10. Frecky's weapon skill 5, no BS. Strength 5, toughness 5, 4 wounds, initiative 5, 4 attacks, leadership 8, 5 up save. And then there's Gary, who's movement 10, weapon skill 7, Strength 5, toughness 5, 4 wounds, initiative 5, 3 attacks, leadership 8, 5 up save. It's like they couldn't figure out what stat they wanted to run for the pair and gave yeah. them each a different thing, which is fun. So I got a question, um, Austin. How do you how do you tell the difference? I'm, I don't mean to be that in a very uh, insensitive way. I just don't know. Like, racist? I, can't, I don't know which dog from the other. <laughs> uh, one is white and one is black. Okay, I, I don't know my... Space Wolves yeah. War. So, okay, yeah. thank you for that. Yeah, there you go. There you go. Yeah. Bam. It's, they're so much fun. They're doing all sorts of fun stuff. Uh, they're fearless. They cause fear one. They have Rampage two, Hammer of Wrath, Feel No Pain five, and are bulky four. So, like, they real big. Um, you yeah. can only take them if you have Russ. Um, they're treated as an HQ choice, as is, like, as part of Russ. They're doing their own thing, though. Which, so with that, that means that they don't take up the 25% point 
point rule for the Primarch. They do not. So that's why, that's fun, probably why yeah. they did that. Yeah, and they also don't have to be with Russ. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, yeah. Which is interesting. Mm-hmm. So Liam and Russ can join them. They can't be joined by anyone else, but they don't have to be with him. Uh, their weapons are teeth and claws. And they're light. Uh, um, sorry, yeah. I know one of the things where light allows you to be basically your any initiative movement is plus one. So yeah, skirmish, they're moving forward, light. moving around at six inches. They're yeah. reconsolidating at six inches. So they all over the place. They're um, running at 16 inches. <laughs> yeah. And then they're charging afterwards. You. Um, <laughs> yeah. So strength five, AP four, melee breaching six up is their, their lovely attacks. And that is how they do it. Mm-hmm. And that my friends is the space wolves. Yeah. That's a solid assault army. Like it's, Yeah. It's, it does everything real good and assault even better. Yep, and that, that's their main focus there. So as far as countering those, it's, I don't know, shoot long-range weapon with last cannons. Last cannons all day. Shoot, that's, shoot them from yep. very far away. And Yep. And pray to God they don't try to charge you on your turn. Because <laughs> they will. Once per game, at least. But yeah, up. Uh, yeah, thanks for sticking around, Austin. Um, yeah, man. Yeah, I cool. got to take it off, but it's been fun. And I'll close up shop. Take it easy. Later, Austin. Once again, thanks for listening to another episode of the Remembrancers Retreat. Another long episode. The Space Wolves are pretty darn cool. Not going to lie. But don't tell Austin I said that. Um, if you like this show, uh, go over to Facebook. Go to Instagram. Give us a like. If you want to go... Uh, check out our website rr30k.com that's where you'll find all of our episodes as well as some cool little things like the Battlefleet Gothic Compendium which is what uh, Austin and Steven put together it's uh, homebrew rules for playing Battlefleet Gothic in the Horse Heresy check it out um, once again if you enjoy our program and would like to support us go over to patreon.com forward slash rr30k podcast become a patron check it out uh we'll have discord hangouts meet and greets and that's pretty much all i have for tonight and once again I'd like to thank all of our patrons starting with our legion praetors alex self rena the floof taco tuesday or bus 22 rock and roll mcdonald's it's all out of order my god uh talk to uh captain sasquatch chaplanisar chris mack garner dot tree of woe joe from music city heresy John Smith, Luke Rizzuto, Matthew Boyce, Michael Tisdall, Mr. Balwick, Nicholas Quenga, Sar Luther, What's Ligma, and Zachary Thompson. Our Legion Centurions, Void Imperatrix, Aaron Maynard, Andrew N., Dave Jones, Duncan, M. Tanzer, Matthew Andresio, Nick Hilda, Richard Bork, Scott LeMay, Lazoy, and our Legion Sergeants, Jonathan Crane, Gorkro, Agrippina, Aircraft Terrier, Dale Jones, Emily O'Hare, Garrett Lowe, Jay DeSales, Carl, Nick Gillen, Noah Atkins, Travis Smith, Bulfarius, and Chad Cheeseman. Thank you all so much for your support. We greatly appreciate it. And until next time, keep those dice rolling. And we'll get to the Dreadnought episode soon, one day when we get to find Steven and release him from the grips of the Alpha Legion. So until next time, bye for now.